Back in 2014, 2015, I didn't realize how big I'd gotten until I saw this picture and decided enough was enough. And I ended up going from 30% body fat to 10%. And while this was a great accomplishment, there were still gaps in my knowledge that could have made things go much smoother. Now with the extra knowledge of going back to school for this stuff and coaching clients for nearly a decade, I'm gonna share with you my expertise to help show you how to do this as efficiently as possible. I'm gonna break it down in four simple steps. Now step number one is making sure you create the right calorie deficit. You don't wanna make this stuff take forever but you also don't want to rush the process and you want to make sure you're in a position where you can lose fat as efficiently as possible but also not do what a lot of people do and try to lose too fast and only end up getting fatter with a slower metabolism the fastest way from 30 percent to 10 percent is not the same as the fastest way from 30 percent to say 25 percent and the reason for this is because your body has what's called adaptive thermogenesis your body is a homeostasis machine and it wants you to stay the same so as you lose weight quickly it sends up a lot of self-defense mechanisms inside your body it makes your metabolism slow down it makes your energy levels drop it makes you much more hungry and you're gonna have a harder time continuing to lose weight to make the big changes you're trying to make so in the beginning stages you can lose around one to one and a half percent of your body weight on average per week maybe up to two percent but as you start getting leaner now that's gonna be too fast and you want to lose between about 0.5 to one percent of your weight on average so this is gonna ensure that you lose the weight in the quickest way possible that also protects your metabolism protects your lean body mass and gets you all the way there. So how do you create this deficit? Well, first it starts with some accountability and that's going to start with your diet. If you aren't currently tracking your intake, this is where you want to start. Not only does it give you some accountability, but it can also be eye-opening to see how much you're truly eating. Plus, once you start tracking, you almost by default start making better choices. Now, once you are tracking and you have an idea of what your maintenance calories look like to create the deficit you want, you want to reduce your calories by about 25% from your maintenance calories. And if you don't know what your maintenance calories are, what you can do is spend the next week tracking your intake don't really change anything about what you've been doing and what you do is take all seven days your total calories divide that by seven that's going to be your average calories per day and if you're roughly maintaining your weight you know this is about your maintenance calories and then when you do hit plateaus you can make some changes you don't have to make as big a changes as before maybe around a 10 percent change plus maybe a little activity we'll talk more about that in the next step now in terms of your overall macros i don't personally worry about carbs versus fat there's plenty of research that shows it doesn't really matter as long as your calories and protein are equated but yes protein is extremely important so i recommend eating around one gram per pound of whatever your goal weight is going to be you can do more if you'd like and has so much benefit not only is it going to help you feel full but it also helps support your muscle and your metabolism and the thermic effect of food from protein is significantly greater than either carbs or fat so it really supports your fat loss goals now as far as what types of foods you eat certainly you want to eat plenty of nutrient dense foods lots of fruits and vegetables and these foods that fuel the body well they're going to help you feel full i actually do recommend recommend tracking your fiber intake as well. I recommend around one to two grams of fiber per 100 calories that you consume, but I also don't want you to get so caught up in feeling like you have to only eat clean and you can't have any foods you enjoy. And if you just try to rush the process and do everything that you completely hate the whole time, even if you get there, there's no way you're gonna keep those results because you're not gonna do something you hate for the rest of your life. And banning certain foods and looking at them as either good or bad is probably the biggest mistake of my past and why I struggled so much before. So you don't wanna fall into this all or nothing approach. Now step three is considerations for your activity levels because you're probably not going to create this kind of result only through nutrition alone and honestly while walking seems to kind of get a bad rap it's one of the best things you can do. It's low impact, it's easy to recover from, and your body actually preferentially uses fat for fuel at lower intensities of activity. The problem with higher intensity forms of activity especially actual hit full-on sprinting is it's super hard on the body and especially when you're in a calorie deficit you're going to have a greater risk for injury and your body also tends to subconsciously consciously do less activity throughout the day when you get really tired from bouts of higher intensity activity and you can even net zero benefit for it. So a great place to start is increasing your step count by about three to 5,000 per day. And if you don't know how much you're doing now, much like you did with the nutrition, just spend the next week. Don't change anything about what you've been doing. Just see what you average and then add three to 5,000 steps on top of that. And then again, as you hit plateaus, now you can make some more adjustments, maybe add another 2,000 steps on top of it to keep progress going. Now, while walking is great, there's actually another form of activity that 
turns your body into a freaking calorie burning machine. And this is strength training. I don't care if you care about having a lot of muscle or not. It's the best thing you can do for fat loss. See, one thing you don't understand about regular forms of cardio is the reason it helps with fat loss is because say you go out for a jog, your heart rate comes up during this activity. You burn some extra calories from that. Then you stop the activity. Your heart rate comes back down to normal and you don't burn any more additional calories. But what happens with strength training is it has an afterburn effect where up to 48 hours after your strength training session, your body burns additional calories, but also it's what helps you build muscle and building extra muscle actually increases your resting metabolic rate. So it's like a trifecta of calorie burning. You burn more calories during the exercise, you burn more calories after the exercise is done, and you burn more calories just being alive by having more muscle. So I recommend training between three and five days per week and make sure you're training hard and really challenging yourself as this is when you're gonna get the biggest benefit. If you're just going in there and nonchalantly moving the weight around and not really pushing yourself, you're not gonna get a whole lot out of it. So make sure those last few reps are challenging. You don't have to go to actual failure, but you wanna be getting close to failure. Now the fourth step, your body has what's called a body fat set point. This is the amount of body fat that your body's used to. You start getting too far below that level and it's like red flag city to your body and it's why your body fights fat loss so much. But there's something you can do to help significantly minimize these adaptations and you do this by taking some periods of maintenance phases. I also recommend dropping your cardio by about 30 to 50% as well. I like to do around two weeks at a time. It can be longer, but when you spend these periods at maintenance, it gets your body to kind of back off that guarding against fat loss. It starts thinking you have more calories again. It starts to recover better. You start to feel better. You have more energy. A lot of times hunger drops significantly and it keeps your maintenance calories higher so you can keep yourself at that good pace when you're in your calorie deficit. And especially in the beginning stages, you can probably take them every maybe eight or 10 weeks or so. As you start getting leaner, then I recommend more like every four to six weeks, but you can take them as frequently as you want. Do not look at these as some sort of setback or delaying your progress. I'm telling you, if you don't take these steps, it's unlikely you're gonna get all the way from 30% to 10%. The body's too adaptive. It's gonna fight you too hard. So don't skip these maintenance phases. Now I did mention earlier, cheats were one of the worst things you can do, but you can use refeeds to get a similar benefit without undoing all your hard work. So to find out how to do that, make sure you check out this video up here and I'll see you in that other video.